Hi guys and welcome back to part three. As you can see, there's never a dull moment here at the farm as we boil down maple sap making syrup. It's a big part of our year. In fact, some of that syrup goes in to the brats that Stephanie mixes up inside and we'll see that in just a little bit. So again, welcome back. We're gonna show you the next step, which is the processing of this hog. So hopefully you're having as much fun watching this as we are putting it together as we get used to the cameras and starting to chronicle our life here on the homestead. And if you have a homestead, congratulations. If you want a homestead, you already have one. Just find out what you can do around your house, whether it's gardens, maybe not raise a hog in your backyard, although I know people are doing that up in the subdivisions. They can be pretty destructive when they get older. For now, let's enjoy part three and get to it. Now, the front shoulder area that we cut off is great for brats because of the amount of fat that is marbled in with the meat and that's on the outside. So let's get this in and cut it up. If you put this on the grill like this, the barbecue sauce, oh, yeah. you'd freak out. I would anyway. I know, I see pieces at like, are, the store. Like yeah, the uh, country style yeah. pork ribs are what these are right here. Loin. Let me show you something that you can do with this real quick. Cut it uh, about that thick. Yeah, about like that. And you can trim it up a little bit, but what we're gonna show you how to do is the butterfly of this. Say you wanted a big, oh, stuffed pork loin. What would you do? This is called butterflying. Look at that. See that? Lays it out like a butterfly. And so you would put all your tastiness inside of here. And this is more of Stephanie's department than mine. You'd put your stuffing in there, you would fold it over, and you would cook it. Or you can say, you know what? I'm just gonna cut it like that. And I'm gonna cook it like that on the grill. You could do that, but these loins can be dry. So this time on this big hog, we're cutting it up to put it into bratwurst and sausage. Stay tuned for that. I was gently reminded that Easter's coming up and instead of cutting up these hind quarters which are usually used for the hams at the holidays, I'm going to show you a couple of cuts and then we are going to put them on the smoker with those bones and we're going to have them for Easter and one for another special occasion. So let me show you how that works. Again, this is off the hind leg. And just like everything else, we're going to start with the knife and then we're going to cut the bone with the saw. Can you imagine on Easter? Oh. Yeah. So we'll clean that up and cut the other one and we're going to keep that in our inventory. If you ever wondered why the back legs or hind quarters as we call them are prized meat, look at that. That's solid meat.
Okay, so I took those long strips of ribs and cut them in half. We wrap them in a freezer tight uh, plastic, buys them a little more time, and then we just wrap them up. I don't know why I'm not allowed to wrap any presents in this house, because I think this looks pretty decent. So one tip that we'll have before we begin grinding is we always want to make sure, especially with pork, but all meats, but especially with pork because the fat's really slippery, that it is really cold. And so we have put it outside here in Michigan where it's below 20 at night and during the day when it's 30, we took these and put them in one of our freezers. So this should go through here. That's a trick. If it's warm, you're going to be here all day. And this little tip is say, hey, those guys use this wooden thing. I can't find it. I can't find one like that anywhere. Well, it's not made for stuffing meat into the grinder. It's made for something else. So. <laughs> it was my sauerkraut stuffer. Sauerkraut stuffer. And it fit the carnivore completely perfectly. So, And it was only 12 bucks. And it's a lifesaver. It is a lifesaver because the one that comes with this grinder is too short and too small. If you ask me, this is really a game changer for us. Yeah. So before I actually mix up all my different um, brat and sausage spices, I get every single kind out that I'm going to need. And over time I have written down in like 10 pound increment recipes for all my different recipes of different flavored brats and sausages that we're gonna make. I'm going to be making um, an apple sage, a dried cherry, Italian, and a traditional brat. So I have all those spices that I need out for those and each jar I'm going to measure out um, 10 pound increments worth of spices for each recipe and then I'm gonna label them, shake them up really well, and then I'll get the meat in here and mix it really well. But before I get all that started, I get everything I need out and the kids are outside with Adam so I can focus and measure out everything without messing it up. And um, that takes me a bit of time, but then when I get the meat in here, it's a lot easier to do. And uh, I think I have about 80 pounds of meat I have to get through today. And then we will stuff it later, let it set up, night, up overnight and then get it into the freezer. So I'm gonna get all this started right now and then in a little bit, we're gonna mix it up and get to stuffing. Okay. So. Real quickly, I'm just gonna mix up my cherry brat filling. I've got my 10 pounds here. I'm gonna mix it back in over this way. Five pounds there. The other five are here. And I'm just gonna look and see which one says cherry, cherry. Flat. I've taken organic dried cherries and uh, soaked them in just a little bit of warm water and then put them in the blender to get them all nice and finely chopped. I'm just gonna mix this by hand. You can use a mix master. I do have a larger one, but um, I just find that it's a little bit easier to do this. And it takes some finesse in a few minutes and you really wanna make sure you get everything completely mixed in well. And after I do this for quite a few moments, and I'm completely sure that every single seasoning and cherry is evenly distributed in the 10 pounds of meat. I will put it in another container. 
And we're going to let it just set up for a few hours and chill again so that when we go to stuff the brats, it's super cold. But before I go to stuff the brat, I'm going to do this once more, super make sure that everything is very well incorporated. If you were to be doing, you know, closer to two pounds of this, you could use your KitchenAid Mix Master or whatever you have and just let the pail roll it out for, you know, several minutes. So everything looks really nice and good, but when I have this kind of pan, it's easier for me to kind of knead it, knead the meat. And uh, I wear my food grade gloves, of course, because I don't want to get this all under my fingernails or anything even. Um, but then also, you know, there's, you know, I still consider 10 pounds to be a small batch since I'm working at 80 pounds on this particular So I'm getting pretty close here. Really, what's nice about this one um, is that I still have a lot of space to get this meat worked. It smells so good. And because this is not the last time that I'm going to work it and mix it up before we stuff it, and it's into its final product. I feel confident that I could probably let it be okay right now because I know that after a few hours I'm gonna do this again. So that's a good start and I gotta get my other flavors mixing up because something's telling me that everybody's gonna wanna come back in the house soon. So I gotta get moving, but that's it. Not too bad, huh? these natural hog cave scenes are the strongest link you do get a few tears here and there so the last thing to do is fire up the grill and give it a little taste test of our rejects this is my favorite part <laughs> wow uh, and now i get to package 60 pounds of brats and 35 pounds of other sausages nice and even and for the sake of packaging I try to get it as flat as possible for freezer space and it unthaws way quicker when you do that I've got one and a half and then one pounds of sweet Italian sausage and then Genevieve is my little label helper when we're all done closing the bag Genevieve gets her marker out and what do you help me do Yep, she's three years old and she's my little label helper, aren't you? Get your marker, okay? Did you label all those for me? Yes. Thank you so much. Welcome. Should we go put them in the freezer? Yes.
So if anybody ever gets a package from us and it's got the green marker, that's Genevieve's labeling, right? Okay. You're good help. Way over here. 